In question 5a, where to state Lentz's law? Well, this is that the direction of an induced EMF is such that it opposes the change of magnetic flux that induced it. In B, we have two small solid metal cylinders, P and Q. P is aluminium, Q is a steel alloy. In part 1, we're told the dimensions are identical, but Q has a greater mass than P. Where to explain the material property responsible for this? Well, this is density. Steel has a greater density than aluminium. In part 2, when P and Q are released from rest and allowed to fall freely through a vertical distance of 1 metre, they each take 0.45 seconds to fall. Where to justify the time value and explain why the times are the same? Well, distance is given by acceleration times time squared over 2. This is rearranging from s equals ut plus a half at squared with an initial velocity u of 0 and the acceleration being due to gravity little g. So, rearranging, we get the time as the square root of 2 times the distance over the acceleration due to gravity. Putting in the values, this comes out at 0.45 seconds. The acceleration due to gravity is independent of the mass. In C, we have a steel cylinder with a... In C, we're told cylinder Q is a strong permanent magnet. P and Q are released separately from the top of a long vertical copper tube, so they pass down the centre of the tube, with the time taken for Q being much longer than the time taken for P. In C part 1, where to explain why we would expect an EMF to be induced in the tube as Q passes through it? Well, the magnetic flux through the conducting copper tube is changing as Q passes through, and EMF is induced when the magnetic flux through a conductor changes, due to the forces on the conduction electrons within the copper. In part 2 we're to state the consequences of this induced EMF and explain why Q takes longer than P to pass through the tube. Well the EMF in the tube will produce a current which in turn produces a magnetic field. This magnetic field opposes the field of the magnet Q. This makes it fall more slowly. P produces no EMF as it is not magnetised so it will fall as normal. In D, the copper tube is replaced by a tube of the same dimensions but made from brass with a higher resistivity than copper. Where to describe and explain how, if at all, the times taken by P and Q to pass through the tube would be affected. Well, the fall time for P will not be affected as it produces no EMF in either tube. Q will produce a smaller current than in the copper tube due to the higher resistance therefore this will produce a smaller magnetic field. It will therefore fall faster than through the copper tube, but it will still take longer than falling through air.